Welcome, everybody, to Funeral Nation, episode 238. I'm Ryan Thogmartin. That is Jeff, the Funeral Commander Harbison. And we have our good friend, Tom Anderson, with us today. And you know what that means. We're talking money. Woo! That's it. We've got Tom on here from the Funeral Director Daily. He is uh, our analyst, if you will. Uh, we have Tom come in about every quarter and share with us what's going on in the death care stock. So, Tom, we're going to turn the floor over to you and uh, listen to what you have to say. Great. Uh, greetings, Jeff. Greetings, uh, Ryan. Happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to all the listeners. Um, what can I tell you? You know, the stock market has been very good over the course of this year, 2021, for people and virtually everything. Uh, the, the new variant of the coronavirus has hit and it's stocked it down a little bit, but I think most, most uh, segments are doing really well. Uh, specifically, what we call the Funeral Director Daily Death Care Index, which highlights seven stocks in the, uh, the death care industry, Hill and Brand Industries, Park Lawn Corporation, Carriage Services, um, Service Corp International, Matthews, Security National Financial Corporation, and Stonemore. If you had owned one share of each of those stocks on January 1, you would have had a value of $190. Owning them on today, basically, you'd have a value of $248. So that's a 57% increase. Wow. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's not hard. The, the market is up. Um, COVID-19 has caused death to go up. People think the funeral industry is, is good because of that. And, um, you know, our, our, our public companies in the funeral home and cemetery market have figured out how to use the increased calls to increase revenue, to bring it to the bottom line. And that's a big part of, of, uh, of why that market is up so much. Who was it, uh, Tom, from your um, viewpoint there is the big winner at this point? Who's kind of leading the pack as far as revenue? And if you would, if you would pick. I'm not saying you're picking a stock, but the one that, that you perceive is doing the best. I, I, I would <laughs> tell you, in answer to that question, there's kind of a segment. And that segment is those stocks that are in the retail, funeral home, and cemetery business. Think of Service Corp International. Think of uh, Park Lawn Corporation. And think of Carriage Services. They are all up 35 to 60%. And it's, it's that increased death number. Um, the companies that do manufacturing, Hillenbrand, which owns Batesville Casket, Matthews, that, that has Aurora Casket, the cemetery uh, manufacturing and crematory manufacturing, they are also up, but not, not quite as much. Wow. Interesting. So we'll talk uh, go ahead, Ryan. Well, I was just going to say, Tom, when we had you on about this time last year, there were a lot of unknowns of what was coming forward for, for 2021. And one of the things we talked about was the number of, I think you called them forward deaths that were, that were happening because of COVID, but the potential that that baby boomer generation, we could start, you know, maybe we were seeing the beginning of, of that influx in, in the space. What is the tune towards the end of this year now that it's 12 months later? I think, you know, and, and the, uh, if you read the reports of the, retail funeral and cemetery companies, they still are saying like, like FCI CEO, Tom Ryan said COVID, you know, he, he kind of cautioned that this may not go on forever. He kind of okay. cautioned in last, last remarks that we do see COVID probably slowing down. I mean, that's a good for America if that happens, good for the world. Yeah. But I think he's trying to tell his investors that this isn't going to go on forever. We're, you know, I think roughly, America would have 2.8 million deaths a year up until 2019. 2020 and 2021, we're going to be close to 3.2 million, an increase of somewhere at 12 or 15%. And so what's going to have to eventually happen is those people would have died, you know, in a statistical area in 2022, 23, 24, 25. They are not going to die in those years. So I think there will be a slight downturn at some point in time. 
if that's do you the think uh, the baby boomers will have a little bit of an offset from that tom i think well as as uh as we know the death rate from now to 2050 not the death rate but just because the number of people and the baby boomers we know that there are going to be more deaths we know there's going to be more deaths so it could conceivably be depending on how these math equations work out we continue to have more deaths they're just not as many more as they were expected because some had went uh I think, I think, you know, funeral service, if you're a retail funeral home in a market that has growing population, you're, you're in pretty good stead right now, because I think the numbers are going to continue. I agree. So what do you see as some of the uh, cautionary things from your perspective about our future? I think, I think, uh, you know, back in March, I talked about inflation. And everybody didn't seem to be nervous about it. Um, I think just in a, in a fairly recent past, um, Powell has came out from the uh, monetary policy and say, hey, this inflation is not transitory. It's, it's here to stay. One, one of the things I think is gonna happen is as this CPI goes up and, and fast food workers are making $15 an hour, that is gonna ramp up into higher wages for funeral home, cemetery, retail workers. At the same time, the American consumer, while the expenses are going up and, and that includes wages, utilities, everything else, while expenses are gonna go up for those companies like SEI, carriage services, uh, Stonemore, Park Lawn, I'm concerned that the services that consumers wanna pay for they want to pay less, more online direct cremation, more of this. So I think one of the big problems going up, going forward is how do retail funeral establishments manage increasing costs with potentially lower revenues consumers want to pay per case? I think that's one, one really big issue coming up. I, I agree. And it's interesting, too, because I'm looking at the uh, increased revenue per case or per call. Uh, yep. that's reported. I know what ours is inside of uh, C&J, and it has increased exponentially. Um, but you're right. At what point do consumers say, well, this is too much? However, um, you know, it's just like weddings and all the other things that we pay for. You know, death is not something that's, it's like buying tires. You know, it's yep. just not fun uh, to have to spend a certain amount of uh, money that on something you know you just absolutely have to. However, it, it seems like, you know, post-COVID, and there is nothing other than my anecdotal watching what's going on, that folks are valuing memorialization. They're valuing um, services. They're valuing things, not, not products, but just the, the funeral itself, the memory, um, the celebration of life more than they did pre-COVID. What are your thoughts? I absolutely agree with you. It, it's it's no longer the casket and the vault that's being picked out. Is how are we going to memorialize Grandpa? How are we going to do this? You know, I'm I'm a big fan of the Shark Tank. I'm I'm an entrepreneur and I love watching the Shark Tank. If you watch that, Mark Cuban, the owner of the uh, Dallas Mavericks and a very very wealthy individual, purchases a lot of investments in what he calls experiential situations. You know, guys can go drive a road grader or there's Halloween haunted houses or whatever. I think the American consumer, just like they have done in weddings, moving them out of churches and things like that, the American consumer looks for that experiential, you know, that experience. And that will be funeral directors that are and retail funeral establishments that are successful, I think will, will offer the experience. I think that's I, very good. I agree with you. <laughs> I think the, you know, the other thing that you mentioned uh, was wages, the commodity of human uh, workers, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I think we get, we get, I say human workers because we're, we're getting a lot of uh, dogs into the business, you know, to help us out. But uh, that was a little tongue in cheek there. Where, to me, that is the most dangerous part of our future is that we're simply, losing more people than we're bringing in. Um, 
you know, the attrition rate of people coming out of school lasting five years. Uh, of course, we look at it too, and there's not the same requirements, you know, when you have cremation service, et cetera. But, you know, having said that, I'm going to put another one on there. I was in a state not long ago, and you have to serve a two-year apprenticeship, okay? Here's what has to happen, is that we got to knock down these stupid regulations because you know if you if you compare a rn degree against the funeral or licensee for, for mortician school an rn goes to work when they hit the floor they get a little on the job training and they're out there doing their job two years no i i you know funeral director daly recently did an article i think it was entitled what's your file load and i you know, every time we had a death, we'd have a file for a person. And my thinking in writing that article is if I had a file load of about three active files when I was a funeral director working on these families, that's a lot of work. You, got, you know, people are calling, getting stuff set up. I think today, funeral directors, because we have more deaths and less funeral directors, some of these funeral director workers are getting six files on their desk on any given time. They can't get home. Plus, they've got cell phones; so they can be reached twenty four seven, and they just—that is what leads to some of the attrition. Um, I think you know, and, and going forward, the math says more deaths, less funeral directors; those caseloads are going to. So Ryan was ahead of this, you know, way back before I met Ryan and I admired him. He was ahead of this about technology. We're going to have to get technology to help, you know, whether it's filling out death certificates online for consumers or putting their wishes online. And I think that's where these online cremation companies may have some, some head start. I'm with you. Yeah. In fact, it's yep. interesting you say that about Ryan now that every time he speaks, um, <laughs> his walk-in song is, how do you like me now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting, back to, yeah. <laughs> getting back to the issue is I think another issue, I don't know if we're going to have it or it's coming, but uh, you know, Matthew's, said in their in their last report that cemetery product is really really selling and they're selling a ton of it but they're not getting it delivered they're not getting it processed yeah. there, there's uh supply chain issues and you know i don't know where uh parts come for caskets and stuff like that but uh i have a friend in the furniture business and he was just showing me an article that furniture sales and manufacturing has came back to america from china it's going great guns in North Carolina like it never had before. But they just can't get it out fast enough because some of the widgets that they use come from China or come from other parts of the world, maybe the recliner mechanism in a chair. And they got all these back orders. And I, I, I don't know where our casket business is on that, but I started to worry a little about it. Yeah, I know there's there's some supply chain issues on, on some of the some of the caskets. I know I've talked to funeral directors that said, you know, there's companies telling them not to order stainless steel caskets. It's going to take six to eight weeks to get one. And, um, you know, the, it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight for some of these supply chain issues right now. Right. That's true. Yeah, the, <clears throat> basically the hardware and that sort of thing for most casket companies aren't made in the U.S. They're made overseas. Uh, I recently ex experienced a supply chain deal. It took us eight weeks to get a washer dryer in because there's nothing in a warehouse and they're doling it out very, very slowly. So it's a real issue going on, you know, and you also have the inflation with the fuel and all those other things going on. So it is going to be an interesting time that if we 2022 shows us a dip <clears throat> in the death rate, causing a revenue to drop, you know, there's only three ways to make money. <laughs> you increase business, increase costs, or, or cut costs, right? Yeah. And actually, if you do all three, you're in great shape. But um, it'll be interesting to see where we land this time next year. You know, do funeral professionals, uh, uh, owners especially, go in and, and retool pricing? You know, pricing is you've got to charge what you need in order to make profit. And that's where... You know, particularly with SCI, um, they do what they need to do and they get what they need and they, they're a profitable business. And yes, this is a, a for-profit industry. 
So um, it'll be something to keep an eye on that as we get maybe to about June of next year when we start getting those reports coming out. The other thing I might add to, uh, you know, to look out for, and I'll look out for, but look for here end of December, early January, is announcements, you know, it was kind of predicted that with President Biden coming in, the capital gains tax may increase. Uh, we've known that older funeral directors dealing with COVID funerals and, and just upsetting the way they do things, a lot of them have adapted very, very well, but a lot of them don't like it. They just don't like the added stress. It was predicted that we'd see a lot of acquisitions in 2021. The front's been kind of quiet outside of Park Lawn announcing late November that they've acquired some funeral homes in southeastern United States. Uh, but all of the CEOs announced in their remarks that they've got a lot in the pipeline. So let's see if that comes to fruition. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you say that because these are the public companies where we see lots of announcing. I, I'm privy in and know many, many, many um, tertiary groups. When I say that, they're regionals, yep. they're startups. Um, I know a few that it's going to be surprising when they announce January that people are going to go, where did they come from out of all of a sudden? And so that's, that's something to keep an eye on as well that we have new money that's come into the funeral business, Correct. not necessarily public and access to money, which caused, I mean, Ryan and I've talked to probably at NFDA six or seven of these uh, regionals that now are going national because they've got a platform to go down. And it'd be interesting yep. to see the competition between public and these guys, because these guys have unlimited capital. Yep. And that's, and that's, you know, COVID-19 brought this awareness of the, of the <laughs> funeral industry to the forefront and saying, wow, this might be a good investable place. And, and they look at it and they might look back and say, wow, it's just not COVID where this has been investable. Look at SCI, look at carriage services, look at what these companies have done. And I actually find it, I was a investor in a very small cell phone company, you know, a service provider. Uh, back in the late 90s. Well, at that time, there were about 480 service providers and cell phones. Today, there's, there's really the big three. There's AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile Sprint. Um, I think it's T-Mobile now because they bought Sprint. And that's what happened in that business. Uh, it just kept getting acquisitions. And, and again, the company I was in, we weren't even making money. And yet Verizon they threw a huge number at us to be part of their system. Mm -hmm. And uh, that merger took place. I think if you're right, Jeff, I have no reason to believe you're wrong. Some companies may be starting simply with that idea that if we get 20, 30, 50 funeral homes, one of these guys is going to add us to their chain. That's it. And, you know, there's, a, there's another group too that are single <clears throat> funeral home ownership not in a regional, but they're buying local because as you said, the guys retiring, they may yep. have used to be uh, competitors, right? Yep. But now that we spread with technology, you could be in the middle of one state and own in three or four states because you've grown and technology means we can manage better. So yeah, it really of, is going to be an interesting landscape. One of the very interesting things about technology, when you mentioned that, you know, I monitor funeral homes and, and funeral businesses in Australia and Great Britain, very anywhere there's a free market and they speak English because I just can't read the reports from the French and that. But uh, uh, one of the things I've really noticed in Great Britain, and they've had tougher lockdowns than we've had, a lot of advertiser advertisements, employment advertisements for mobile funeral arrangers. You've got to be licensed. You can live in one community and make arrangements for the whole chain. And it's, you know, you stay in your home and do that. And I think in North America, we're going to see some of that adaptation also. I agree. Yeah. It, it's exciting to see. I don't, I don't yeah. really see for our profession, some people get mad at industry, but whatever we are, I don't see a downside for the, for 2022. No, I think we keep working hard. We've always been good, hard workers. We want to want to provide service to our uh, 
you know, there's a certain amount that's in the financial sector that wants to see the dollars come in and the revenues come in. But I've always said, especially funeral directors that work in my employment, and I did buy a competitor once and it worked out very good, worked out really good. I, I hired their staff and everything. Um, what I think is the vast majority of funeral directors are in it to give service to mankind. And if, if the owners and managers can just keep them happy, you know, and things like that, they can do really, really well. I agree. Yeah. Well, Tom, thank you for coming on and uh, giving us insight. We always look forward to uh, your expertise to unwind what we read. And, and uh, basically, I, I enjoy these conversations because, you know, through the industry, I believe people are having them. But yeah. it was interesting today. We hit a lot of different points to consider. Yep. So uh, you're a big catalyst to help us out. And if you're not watching or looking at Funeral Director, uh, Funeral Daily Director, Funeral Director Daily. Wow. There you go. Um, yeah, that was it. Hey, look, I swear there's nothing in the coffee and it's Monday. But uh, <laughs> as Ryan said, you know, uh, how do you like me now? I remember uh, when you got up and uh, Ryan, you were in Vegas or somewhere and you're giving a presentation <laughs> You said, if you didn't listen to me five years ago, yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> How do you like me now? And so right. I think, you know, looking at our, our profession and taking a step back and not ignoring what the public companies are doing, but really you need to watch what they're doing because they yep. are navigating what they see from all sorts of analysts where the rest of us are just in the community. When I was a small town funeral director, I didn't have any money to buy stocks. It's not all about buying the stocks. It's if you're running a funeral home, you need to watch what they're doing because they are, at the, whatever you think about them, they are at the cusp of the profession. And so I used to analyze the reports to see how my reports, you know, my finances look compared to theirs. Yeah. It had just Good the stuff. same amount of zeros. That's why you're going I just had a lot less zeros, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind stopping over in Arizona on your way to Florida on the jet, just to say, hey, that'd be awesome, Tom. <laughs> Good to see you. Have a happy All right, holiday. thank you, Tom. You too. Yeah, take care. All right. All right. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Till next time, have a great effing week. Out here.